Hey guys, today's video we're going to be doing a simple project, but something that's been needing to be done for a long time. We're going to be improving the lighting in this furnace room here. Up is this one LED bulb, which is making me look like a liar because it's now working perfectly fine on a pull string. And uh, now it's working fine, but usually this bulb has a nasty strobe to it. So I'm going to replace this lighting setup in here, which as you can see, this whole thing is quite dimly lit as uh, this furnace room is going to become a lot more seen on my YouTube channel coming up eventually as uh, I just mounted a new board in here for what's going to be mounted onto this wall which I don't I don't want to say anything because I don't know when this is getting uploaded in relation to other videos um, anyways guys replacing this lighting setup what the plan is here is I'm going to put a I think a fixture on the ceiling or maybe across here. I'm not sure what exactly we're gonna figure. I have this four foot LED fixture, 4,000 K. I think it's also around 4,000 lumens. Um, what used to be up in the garage until I did a T-bar ceiling. So one of those laying around figured I'd use that. But because it's got a cord end plugs in, I'm gonna put up this guy here, but then I'd still have to use the pull chain on it, which I don't want to. So I'm gonna run a three wire down from the box and this into a switch box where I'm going to install this uh, this motion sensor switch so lights will come on right when you walk in the room all automatically. You may be able to see a light fixture does not fit this way so I either have to put it up here on this edge though where it might be kind of tight on room here too. Uh, I could other I could possibly put it like that but if there's going to be something on this wall here and this is sort of the more open side I think we're best to hang this fixture right around here probably at around the height of that duct I think if we hung the fixture right around this height that would be great because obviously if it's uh, any higher than the duct the ducts gonna create shadow and I don't want it too low where you're hitting your head but if it's the same height as this duct shouldn't be impacting anything too badly this needs to come out too because right now it feels like I'm in a freezer because this system is running in cooling and for some reason on this supply duct there's an opening here I'm gonna have to just patch this up because I don't think we need it anymore but uh yeah so that's the plan anyways light fixture can hang under that for now all right enough talk let's get started here Could look for the breaker, but we'll be done the job before I find it. Okay, so we have a three wire ran in here, but not capped off or used or anything. Six volts, that's probably just induction from, it's probably just from running parallel with the other hot. So I'm going to first drop down our new 14-3 uh, wire down to our switch location. actually cap off this red in here though too since it shouldn't just be left not capped off at all this Lumex guy back in there put this clamp back on here run 
down to right there. You could just do this with a 14-2. It's been done for many years with just a 14-2. However, if you're installing a switch like this, that's electronic, it will likely require a neutral. And uh, you won't get a neutral if you're using the white and the black in the 14-2, both to carry your hot one being a switch leg. That's why we run a 14-3, so we can use the black and red. We use black as your power, red as your switch leg, and you still have the white to use as a neutral. This device I'm installing actually cheats, where it uses the ground as a neutral. As the ground as a neutral, you'll find that with a lot of smart devices and uh, electronic devices. It's really a crappy thing that the companies do and get away with. I'm not sure how ULC and CSA keeps allowing it, but they seem to do it and get away with it. So. Uh, Really, I don't need this 14.3, but I want to just do it right. Um, you're supposed to run a 14.3 to every device box now. Speaking of doing things right, let's put some straps in here. Within 300 mil of the device. Within 300 millimeters of the box. Or 30 centimeters or a foot. So before anything's wired up, up top we will get this switch installed. Well, it's all still dead. Just put a brand new blade on this knife. Cuts like butter. Like I barely, I'm not even touching this. Like barely any pressure on it. Oh yes. Slice is so nice. It's actually safer to have a sharp knife, way safer. I've I've even cut myself, like cut my skin with a very sharp knife before on accident. And uh, like doesn't even hurt, you don't even feel that it's a nice sharp knife. We'll wrap the bond screw right there. There's your box bond. Okay, looking at this device here, you actually have this on the back. This is what I was talking about. Remove metal link if connecting to neutral. We're gonna do it properly and connect it to neutral. Basically, is what they do is you're supposed to screw it on. Since we are connecting to neutral, we're gonna remove this link. So it's basically what it does is it jumpers the neutral terminal out to ground. So it will actually use the ground as that path back to neutral. You can really kind of see what they do there. So there's your neutral terminal and they just use this jumper. That way if you have a box without a neutral, but I don't think they should even do it at all. So we're gonna move, remove this jumper and do it the right way. There you go. There's the ground. We don't require a ground in our switches in Canada since our device boxes always have a ground. Actually, we need that neutral longer because we got to wrap it around that terminal. Okay, there's our neutral. doesn't say polarity matters so we're going to assume it doesn't and we'll come back later if we have any issues okay, I think they're supposed to go that way yes they are this one doesn't look like one you can change the settings on, like the timer settings, though they've got these same ones in my school in the original area, and they seem to stay on for quite a while. That's a Phillips gun. It's just a furnace room. I, I don't care. It doesn't need to be that perfect of functionality. 
it doesn't stay on for that long, whatever. I'll rip off this circuit label too, obviously, since this is from its previously installed location. Pretty fancy stainless plate for a furnace room. Living in luxury in here. Always put your screws up and down. Unless you don't want to and then there's just something wrong with you. Alrighty, up top here now. Strip back this sheathing here. Start by splicing all our grounds together. Put a cap on this red just in case it gets spliced to something somewhere else. You don't want to just hang it out in the box live. Rather have that capped off. Oh, actually, we're gonna need. I shouldn't have done this. We're gonna need to splice on a pigtail. Okay, I just added on a ground pigtail. Now we need to put all of our neutrals together. So I can cut the neutral off of this guy here. And I need to pigtail a neutral to our switched receptacle that we're going to have. Okay, there's our neutrals spliced up. Throw them right on there. Place our constant hot going down to the switch. We will make our red or switch leg coming back, and this guy will only need to splice up to here. That's our hot spliced in. And this guy we actually got to watch out for because it could be hot depending on the switch. So we'll, we're now going to wire. We're now going to wire up this guy, which just hooks up like a normal receptacle, and that's going to be switched for our light. Do a ground just like normal. Do up our neutral just like normal. Neutral. We'll splice up our hot. There we go. I just turned off the switch. There's on, off. 
you never want to completely trust motion sensors because they can turn back on kind of unexpectedly, but I just won't. I'll just still treat it as if it's hot. It's the safest thing to do. Well, other than shutting it off. But I don't want to find the breaker. There we go, even if that was hot, we never shorted the ground or anything, so it would have been fine. Then we can put this all back together here. Plug in our light here. Hit the switch. There we go. Now we've just got to hang this guy up here. Here's aircraft cable to hang this fixture. So I'm gonna make this a tight loop. I'm gonna make this a tight loop so I can put it over this screw head and once it's crimped down, it should be nice and tight. Something like that. This isn't the proper crimper, obviously, but it'll work fine. There you go, that's one end made up. I'm gonna cut it excessively long for now. and make up another one. Obviously I don't want to screw this into the floor and have it poking through so I'm going to attach it to this beam right there and this guy right there I'm going to find the center between that and the duct and uh, yeah, right here to the center is around 10 and a half inches, so five and a quarter. We will go from there, same on the other side. And my screw here is not a wedged head screw, it's just flat, so it won't try and pull through. So I can put that around my wire here which is a very tight fit, which is what we want. This old wood is so tough. show this side since it's such a bad spot.
Well, I'll just keep hanging it in the dark. Not sure if you guys could see what just happened. Okay, it didn't actually blow the circuit, but is what happened is uh, the fixture slipped in, in between the prong there and uh, short hit the hot and it also killed that switch. So I'm gonna have to replace that that I just put in. <laughs> hey guys, I put a new switch in and this is all hung up, suspended there. And I've got the cord just going back to this plug in here. So. You can see that is now working and this is definitely illuminating this room much much better it doesn't strobe anymore and it's just better light overall definitely much much better it's still kind of dark on this side and going back there but it's uh not terrible guys well i think that about does it for this video i hope you guys did enjoy it if you did make sure to give a thumbs up if you do have any comments or questions make sure to put those down in the comment section down below and if you do enjoy my uh, channel make sure to subscribe also i do have an instagram account at pickle 700 for bonus content and stuff posted earlier than you'd see it on youtube that sort of thing Alrighty, guys that's all i got thanks for watching